because they're not like other scrunchies on the market. See, so yeah, and they're the tags. I think it'll look a lot better. You can tell the difference. So I think this is a good amount. Ah, <laughs> you're not meant to put white in there. Hi everyone. So today we are going to have a look at my scrunchie process. So a couple of weeks ago I did a video when I was trying new products. That is when I trialed the XL scrunchies. I trialed them in a burrito method and then I decided to make a burrito method with my normal scrunchies. I haven't done that in the past because my elastic is very thick and wide and it is still it is quite difficult to thread it through especially for fabrics like uh, plain linen and stuff that's just very grippy. We are going to see, I'm going to see today if I should change to the burrito method or if I should just add an extra four inches or four to eight inches to my fabric. So I haven't really done any sort of trials yet. I was just gonna wait to do like this video so you guys can come along with me and we'll have a look. Honestly, I don't know if it will be a good idea to do burrito method only because it's gonna take me a lot longer to do burrito uh, than it does to do my actual method that I already do. So yeah, I don't know yet. Uh, I've also, I have tried um, sewing around the elastic um, for burrito method to see if like that would work but it didn't work it took like an extra five minutes just to do it that wet method so that's obviously not what I'm going for I want something that's uh, fast because I do make quite a lot of scrunchies uh, in a week and I want something that's easy as well and then also the look like I have a pretty signature style I suppose and I'm not sure if I want to stray away from my signature style per se uh so yeah i'm not too sure because they will look quite different with the burrito method whereas i kind of like the way mine look because they're not like other scrunchies on the market because they have the white elastic it was actually by mistake i did white elastic i had a heap of elastic sitting around and no one told me that you know scrunchies are meant to be thin and I just happened to have like this white elastic I got from I don't even know where and I used it and then at one market a lady like sort of picked up my scrunchies and I was like white elastic oh that's different oh I like that and that was the first time I was selling scrunchies sort of thought and I was like ah <laughs> you're not meant to put white in there ah okay uh, and then yeah just kind of stem from there. I went through a lot of different trials to find the perfect white elastic for myself. Uh, I do not really say where I got my elastic from. I do tell you what I use. I use non-roll ribbed two centimeter wide elastic but I will not share with you where I get it from because that is my personal supplier. Uh, anything else really I'll share but not that. <laughs> I, I did actually do a couple new scrunchies the the video will probably already be up where i went to my market and i made a heap of scrunchies before i went i wasn't going to make any scrunchies until next financial year which is next month when i'm filming this video uh, because i will be making a whole new website i don't know if i'll like i don't even know if i can make a whole new one i don't know like i have to have a look in shopify i think i can start creating a new website before making it live and like switching it over otherwise i'm gonna have to shut my website down for a couple weeks or maybe not weeks maybe like days uh and just change everything but i need to have everything prepared for when i do that because i have over 400 different fabrics easily 400 there are another probably 100 over in the tubs that i've only got like a couple left like four uh between one and four different like pieces left so yeah there's there's a lot to change i want all new photos uh because some of my listings are so old that someone will buy it and I'm like, I don't even know what that scrunchie is. I haven't seen that in like years. But sometimes I don't even have it in stock. Yeah, I just, I need to go through and do a massive overhaul because uh, I have, I, at the moment I have about 700 different variations on my website 
and it's just it's not that it's too many it's just it needs to be updated everything needs to be revamped all my new stuff needs to be in there so i i also need to make every single scrunchie that you well every single fabric that you see here and all the way down i need to make a scrunchie every single one of them fabrics into a scrunchie uh and then take photos of them and then i probably won't change my descriptions because they i only recently changed them about a year ago but yeah the photos need changing the listings need changing um in like terms of Doing, I will probably be still keep my bulk sort of listings. I do uh, probably like five to ten scrunchies per listing photo. It just makes it so much easier for me and customers. Uh, like, because I obviously, yes, I have 400. So if someone was scrolling through 400 separate scrunchies, there's way too many. Uh, but when they're in like bulk lots, it just makes it easier. I started doing that because Etsy, I didn't want to spend 20 cents per listing on per scrunchie. So I started putting them in bulk lots and just uploading them like that. And it was just so much cheaper for me. And then when I moved over to Shopify, I did the same thing. I just kept the same listings and just added extra ones as I went along. Some scrunchies, yes, I'll do separately like different sort of prints, uh, like my butterfly scrunchie. That will like that one that's right there uh, that one will go up by itself because I don't really see the need of putting it in to like a combination but like there's different ones like my farm animals ones or like just plain linen ones velvet ones I have candy land and stuff as well uh, which are all like plain velvet colors like all those it's just so much easier when they're all in one photo one listing with a heap of variations so that is what I'm planning to do. It's going to be a massive, massive job. Uh, I am actually going on holiday next week. So it will happen when I get back from holiday at the start of the financial year, uh, which it will be in July. So yeah, that's why I need to figure out what I'm going to be doing now before I go. Um, so when I get back, I can get right into making every single one of these, taking photos of every single one, uh, like putting them into different groups. I need to do like a, almost like a stock take sort of thing. Just figure out how much uh, meters I have of each of these as well. And then also I'm, I want to like make my website look better as well. Um, like yeah, just new photos. Um, I need to update my about section. doesn't even have that. I have a YouTube channel. I've had a YouTube channel for 11 months now. So, and I don't even have anything to do with my, that on my website. So that needs to go up. Uh, I need to, yeah, just so much. And I want to have a look at different Shopify, Shopify themes as well, because uh, I think I'll definitely keep my Excel scrunchies as separate because I do not have as many variations of those. I've probably got maybe about 35 now. Uh, I have a heap that I just uploaded to my, like, Shopify. So I just want a massive tangent. Yeah. Anyway, so the options. Let's have a look see. We are going to see whether burrito method versus just my normal method for start. And I will be adding four inches at least to each of my tubes. My tubes at the moment are around 4.5 inches to 5 inches, so that much. Uh, by about uh, they were 18 inches now I'm wanting to make them 22 in length and that's a minimum unless for my velvets the velvets they might be 20 I don't know that's what we're going to find out so besides the actual making of it I also want to find out how much material to use now so there is like probably three different types of WOF, width of fabric, that I have. There's like a heap of cotton, they're about 112, uh, which make about 22 inches um, length, so they make two scrunchies per thingamajig, per length. <laughs> and then there's uh, velvets there, I can make about 20 inches, so be about 60 inches in WOF, and I can make about three out of those. And then there's rayon. So my rayon ones were the 18 inch and I could make three. But now I'm thinking I will make the rayon one, like I think it's like 25 inches. And then I'll be able to make two. Maybe it's like 26 or seven. But yeah, so it's a lot longer. Um, so it'd be more fluffy. 
and especially for the rayon because it is like a thinner fabric I think it will look a lot better. For my XL scrunchies, I've been using the WOF of pretty much any fabric, like a satin and stuff. I just use the whole strip. But for my velvet ones, they were way too thick. So I had to cut off maybe 20 inches and use whatever was left out of that. So I'm thinking it might be the same sort of issue with doing my velvet ones like 26 inches. I think that would just be too big. Uh, too bulky and probably maybe even like a waste of fabric because I think my velvet ones at the moment they're pretty good in terms of size it's just really like the the satin and like the thinner fabrics the satin the rayons those I think would benefit having quite a lot more fabric on like the tube anyway let's do this but first I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video and here's a little more about them. Skillshare is an online learning community which offers thousands of inspiring classes to people like you and me, creative people. They have so many classes from illustration, graphic design, they have freelancing and entrepreneurship sort of classes as well. They also do marketing. It's made specifically for learning so that means there's no ad stuff that you need to learn and can learn and it's just a really well set out platform. So it's definitely worth having a look at. There's just so many amazing classes that I just can't wait to do. Obviously I'm gonna have to find some time to do them, but there's one that's like appropriate for beginners. And I think doing this class will help me like learn a lot more as well. This one's by Kat. So I have started this one. I've learned a couple things already. And for the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description, you'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare, which is definitely worth checking out. So I'm thinking about just using this fabric. It is a satin. It's like really like dusty pink. It's really pretty. For my, my different sort of method, method ones, whether to do my original method or my burrito method. So I'll use that. I feel like I can hit two birds with one stone right now. If I cut this material like really long, I think then I'll be able to gauge whether satins and rayons and stuff would be better off being longer as well rather than the 18 inch like more like 26 or whatever it was so i'm definitely keeping the four and a half or you know round about and i'm thinking rather than cutting this into three like i would usually i think i'll just cut it in half and see how they turn out for both the original and the burrito. So that would be about three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it'd be about 29 inches for this piece. So it is a bit longer. And I will compare this one to another satin one because I can see that I have satin available. So I'll compare this to my like OG OG one before I've changed like what sort of size uh, the actual length was because it will there is a big difference I reckon I suppose I will make the burrito first and then I'll make my original one so when I'm saying burrito you're probably not really understanding what I mean unless you actually do make scrunchies yourself so I will show you what I mean if you just watch sort of what I'm doing you'll get it so this is the burrito method, and then I'll do my original method.
And I also got a bobkin as well. So this one's the clover one. I can't remember if I've mentioned it in my other videos yet. But yeah, it's really cool. I'm just gonna wait for a moment for that to like dry. Usually I make my scrunchies in bulk, so when I put them through the machine, all the glue is already dry. I don't want to like freck my needle or anything by putting this through with wet glue. Final touch. Okay, and that is the burrito method that I was talking about. Uh, so as you can see, like the seams are on the outside and the elastic actually is free to move around. So that's one way. And then this is my OG method, but just with a lot more material. I've also got my flip stick, which is what I use for these tubes. Okay, so here's what we end up with. That's the burrito, and this is my original one. So as you can see, that one is looks bigger. But this one like is thicker. And this one doesn't have any lines on the outside, whereas that one does. So if you put them on the wrist, you don't have any lines anywhere whereas if you put the burrito on the wrist you've got those lines I'm gonna try them in my hair as well I think it's really much of a muchness really I do much prefer the like more material as well I'll show you what this looks like in the material I've been using so here's two examples so this is with, what, 29 inches, and these are with 18. So it's just not as like that, whereas that's as far as you can go with that elastic. Whereas with them being this like sort of length, it stops there because that's how far the actual fabric can go. I'm still honestly leaning towards the original method, mostly because, I don't know, it's more me. This is just the way I've always done it. And I personally prefer this way, and so does my mum and my partner. They both think that I don't, I shouldn't change the way I do them, just because other people have suggested doing burrito. I don't want to be like everyone else, I guess. So yeah, and they're the tags. We'll see what they look like in the hair. So 
So this is the burrito. And then this one is the OG. Okay, so I just tried to take some photos on my phone. This one is the burrito, and that's... This one's the burrito, and that one is my original. I do prefer the look of the original in the hair. Like, you can't see the massive seam. I also prefer it on the wrist as well. I think I'm going to stick with the original. And I'll just up the length in like the length of the material because I also do prefer how much like more plush this one is like I mean it doesn't like feel more plush but there's quite obvious amount of more fabric compared to the other ones whether that just be in the stretch like if I was to show that and I'll get the other one again. You can tell the difference. So yeah, this one obviously has the a lot more and this one doesn't. So yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to go with my original. Like, the burritos are really nice. And I guess they're nice that they don't have the seam going across. But because I have white elastic anyway, it honestly doesn't really make a difference to the look of my scrunchie. Um, it's still really thick. The only difference is the elastic can freely move around, which that doesn't really matter for this because it's so thick anyway, it doesn't get twisted. So it's not like it's a... Um, it doesn't really affect my method uh, like that greatly if I was to do burrito now if I was to do burrito it's going to take me a lot longer and honestly I just I don't like them as much as I like my normal ones and I think that's important as well like I need to like the product that I make and I'm proud of the product that I make already I just sort of thought that I probably should add some more fabric to it and I would also give the burrito method a go uh, and see if I liked it. I don't. <laughs> uh, I don't really like it as much as my original. Uh, and obviously there will be conflicting like people in the comments saying that they do prefer the burrito and that's completely fine. Like that's uh, your opinion and like I'm happy for you to have that opinion and whatnot and you think that looks better, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, my personal opinion uh, for my business and the way I make scrunchies is I prefer this way and this method uh, So yeah, I don't think I'll Switch to burritos at the moment. Uh, I do prefer the burrito method for my XLs That's uh, yeah, they just look so much better that way But yeah, I, I like my original method And I think that's that yeah <laughs> All right, let's continue on with the OG method, uh, with just extra material. The other thing I wanted to test was I wanted to make one of that one out of rayon. I wanted to make one out of cotton, and I wanted to make one out of velvet. So they are pretty different in terms of the width uh, of the fabric from salvage to salvage. So we'll see what they look like. Obviously, each material that I have behind me is going to look very different uh, depending on how much fabric is used uh, because of like how much, like how dense the fabric is. I'm just going to see if I have any left in my boxes over here uh, from the market because I did already make, I think I made cotton ones and I'm pretty sure I made uh, corduroy ones. So I'll just have a look at those and like they were made with 22 inches rather than the 18. I love that. I also did like a duck drill one. The reason I say duck drill is because I can't remember what that material is. I get this, it's like a canvasy material, but it is called either duck or drill. That's the section I got it from. So yeah, there's that one. And that, that looks quite plush already. Like that obviously looks a lot better than that. 
So I'm thinking I may have used extra. These ones I definitely used extra because I just cut them straight in half. So there's the corduroy and then there's the cotton. So I won't need to make the cotton and corduroy out of these actually. I'll just need to make rayon and velvet. So these both have the 22 inches and I think they just make a lot, a lot different, like a world of difference really, just adding that four inches. Uh, they just a bit more, it's not more stretchy because that's how, that is literally how far my elastic will go. Like that is how far, that's, it ain't going any further than that. Um, I prefer the tight elastic, I reckon it works better in normal to thick hair. Uh, not so much for thinner hair, but I do offer thin elastic for those with finer hair. But um, yeah, I think they look a lot nicer. Like even when I had them on the display board, they looked a lot nicer with just that little bit more material. And I usually just cut that off these. I usually just cut that material off and put them in a box anyway. I've got four boxes full, like chock-a-block of offcuts already. So it's not like I need to make more offcuts. I guess better to just use uh, use the whole lot. Uh, the offcuts I usually would use for like bows as well. So yeah, I'm I'm happy with using 22 inches for fabrics that are about. 112 centimeters in WOF. So we've got three different types here that all have very similar WOFs. Corduroy, uh, which I think that's actually just called cord. It's not like proper corduroy. This one is uh, just yeah, one from Spotlight. Well, they're all from Spotlight, let's be honest. But um, it, it's sort of like a rougher one, but not. it's not too bad. Like It is one of the rougher ones I do own, but I just thought it was really pretty. So we've got, yeah, the corduroy, the, um, like, I'm pretty sure it's drill, but it could be duck. Um, but that's, that's like a canvasy material. Uh, so it is a lot denser. I, yeah, so it is like a bit different to your normal cottons or anything. So I'm going to grab out a rayon and one of these. Okay. So as you can see, like, that's pretty good. These are the velvet ones. So I can make three at the moment out of like one strip. So I am happy with the look of these ones. Like they look plush still. And like when you stretch them out, like they're still a bit left over. Whereas these, like that, look how tight that is. So that's rayon. So I'm thinking about instead of using, getting three scrunchies out of that piece of material, I'm thinking of cutting it straight in half like I did with this one and having it like more plush. So yeah, we're gonna give those two ago. So I just got confirmation the OG is way better in their words <laughs> from you know people I trust the most. I, I like didn't even tell them which was which uh, and they said this one. So that's good with me. All right, what was I doing? I forgot. I got really distracted then. Rayon and velvet. So this one's about 26 inches and this one's about 28 inches for the velvet.
Okay, so here's the two. As I suspected, this is like just too much fabric. Uh, bring the other two over. So I think this is a good amount. That's about, I think 20 inches, maybe 21 inches. Because I can make three out of the WF. Whereas that is what I said, I think like 28, 29. It's just too thick. Yeah. And it kind of, it makes it a bit tighter around the wrist as well. That feels a lot more nicer on the wrist. So there's those two. And then we've got this one. So as you can see, a lot more scrunch rather than that one. So this one has been in my box for a little while. So it's a little bit more flattened. But you can still see the difference. A lot more material on this one. All right, well, I think that's it then. I've decided on the method I want and I've decided on what sort of length is best for my scrunchies, um, depending on what sort of material. So as I said before, velvet, I'll stick with what I had. And anything like rayon, satin, all that, I will do a heap more material. And then my cottons, I'm just going to add an extra four inches. But I will be sticking with the OG scrunchie. Well, thank you so much for coming along on my little journey about uh, finding what's best for my little business. Uh, I hope you did enjoy this one. And I hope you can leave a like and a comment if you feel like you want to. <laughs> but yeah. Well, thank you. And... I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.